Greetings, it's Christine. Today we are back with a really fun and educational video. As you people might know, February is Black History of the Month. Black goths aren't often represented in bigger magazines, shops, well-known bands, and in community in general, which I hope will change in the future. Today I have invited Yes, in King to my channel. And we're gonna talk about a well established and black goth musician. Thank you for accepting my invitation, yes. Back to you. Hello YouTube land. YouTube land. Oh oh oh, I really meant to say greetings, it's Jesse King. <laughs> I am with you because I am collabing with Christy Exist, or how she says on Instagram, Exist Christy. And if you do not know, even though it started in either the UK and, and or the United States, it has become a worldwide experience because we are a global world and we're no longer a national world that February is Black History Month and I happen to be a goth that is black and Christy has been so nice to collab with me this month and I'm super excited I am going to be talking to you about a musician in the goth genre who is also black and for those of you that this is your first time seeing me, I do talk a lot about the experience of being black and goth in many different formats on my channel. One of the ones I have is a playlist called Unsung Black Goth Musicians. I call it unsung because usually in the social media side of the goth community, there are certain bands and certain music artists that you'll hear over and over again. Examples, Depeche Mode, Victor, Susan the Banshees. <laughs> uh, you might hear about artists like Robert Smith, Morrissey, even though Morrissey is not my favorite person, and Peter Hook and Ian. And you'll hear all these people. But there are a bunch of artists and a bunch of bands that are not mentioned either at all or very little. And that's why I call it unsung. And I focus on the black goth musicians because, again, I am black and it is an experience that isn't talked about as much on the goth community worldwide on social media. It is an experience that isn't often shared and I am here to share it and to bring more awareness of it. And that is the playlist that I actually did a focus of Barry Adamson on my channel. But I want to focus him again on you guys. And the reason that I wanted to focus on Barry Adamson is, if you do not know who this guy is, he has worked with Nick Cave for a long time. He's been with him at the tail end of their The Birthday Party Band. And he also works with him with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds Band. And I know that he recently came out with something new. I see he has some controversy. <laughs> some people really like what Nick is putting out. Some people think that it's a little too egotistical, a little bit too artistic. It's not as good as this older stuff. You know, there are going to be people that hate it and people that love it. And because that's kind of in the news now, I thought it would be interesting to talk about one of his band members to celebrate Black History Month. Now, on my page, when I did this, I was kind of starting out that playlist and that format of presenting information and I was mostly getting my information on wikipedia.com because I thought hey it's pure it's reviewed it's a pretty good source material however I found when I was doing other artists that I showcase for different playlists that one person reached out to me and said hey the information on wikipedia is wrong I've tried to get them to correct it and they just start working with me. I then try my best not to use Wikipedia 
except to maybe get an idea of what genre of music the musician or band is because I don't usually see genres listed on their websites or other sources. This information is going to be completely new to people who know me and people that are new to you. I am going to be completely giving the information this time on his actual website, which is BarryAdamson.com. He has a whole section of biography. I'd say it's probably, if you broke it down into book-wise, a page and a half. And I am going to read the biography to you. Here it goes. It says, Barry Adamson has been creating all of his life. Brought up in Manchester's Moss Side, Adamson learned to play the bass overnight for Magazine, Manchester's most influential band of that area. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys know that band because I also know the band Magazine as well. When they disbanded five albums later in 1981, his singular style was spotted by the birthday party, with whom he played several times. His establishment as a solo artist came after a three-year stint with Nick Cave and the Bad Seats with the release of his classic first solo album, Moss Side Story. And to be clear, Moss Side Story is Barry, not Nick Cave and the Bad Seats. Thought the writing is a little confusing there. Okay. Adamson has worked with some of the film industry's most intriguing mavericks, including Derek Jarman, The Last of England 1987, David Lynch, The Lost Highway 1997, Oliver Stone, Natural Born Killers 1994, and Danny Boyle, The Beach 2000. After 32 years, Adamson's talents as much, are as much demand by new generations of artists as he was after his first solo release, which collaborations in recent years across a variety of art forms, musician, composer, writer, photographer, filmmaker, Barry Adamson is not a man to take it easy. So here's something that's interesting. On that website, whoever wrote it or if Barry wrote it, Heavily focused on the fact that he was with The Birthday Party, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and the band The Magazine. But there was a lot actually not mentioned that is actually on Wikipedia that I found. And there were bands that were also just as important that were not mentioned. I'm actually going to list these other associated acts that are on Wikipedia because I think that it is a shame to not list the importance that he's been in and it's a huge discredit to just say oh he's just been in a few goth bands no he's been in a lot he was also with the band the buzzcocks yes the buzzcocks of pete shelley he was also with visage yes the visage of the new romantics he was with pete shelley as a soloist and i think leaving those out diminish who he is as an artist and his huge importance in the goth subgenre. I hope that you got kind of an idea of Barry Adamson's history, the legacy he's laid down in the goth music genre, and his importance into the community, and why I think more people should be talking about him, especially during Black History Month. This is me, Justin King. Thank you again, Christy, for having me on your channel. I greatly appreciate it. And for those of you who keep watching me afterwards, I appreciate meeting you here and let the good times roll. And if this is the last time you see me, thank you for giving me a chance. This is me, Justin King, and hopefully I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, YouTube land. Thanks for all the information, Jess. I'm sure that we all learned something new and interesting. Or if you didn't, appreciate seeing Barry be mentioned and spotlighted again. If you want to know more black artists, I would recommend checking out the playlist that Yes has made. It's in her channel. I will put a link in the description box. I think it is quite an educational playlist and quite fun to watch. So I recommend checking it out. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.